Hello Ethical Hackers! Welcome to this new live hacking session demo in which we're going to finally finish up WebGo challenges and the last one is without account. If you feel intimidated by these challenges, I encourage you to first go ahead and visit the OWASP Top 10 playlist which demonstrates the most famous security vulnerabilities over the last three years all in one playlist. Should be good to follow along these challenges. You can download the uh, OWASP Top 10 Training Lab which comes with uh, this playlist. You can find either in the description box or by going simply to the hackerish.com and you can see in the sidebar the same link. So let's get started. Alright, as usual we configure our web browser to talk to burp suit which we already have running here so once I choose burp suit here I start to get immediately some requests if you don't know how to use burp or how to configure your web proxy just follow along with the OWASP top 10 training playlist you should be good to go I will just add this to the scope and edit this. We've already done that in previous videos. So now what we can do is get rid of these noisy requests and let's remove them from the scope and show only in scope items. Using this filter let's remove also this one and now we have filtered out all the requests that we don't care about. Now let's try to see how we can go about hacking this challenge. This seems like a feature to send a rating, but we get, sorry, you need to log in first in order to vote. Okay. And here it seems like this is a, a rating statistics separated by number of stars and here we have a list of users with their respective comments or reviews. Now if we click on either of those users we get nothing because there's simply no link attached to them. Okay, I will see if there are any other features. So this is the field where we send our token, our flag, and here I don't think we can trigger anything okay so if we go back to burp we see that we have some requests so the first one is challenge vote slash four which corresponds to this feature so if I click here I see that um, so let's redo the same thing so we have vote slash three in this case three stars I guess now let's do five and see yes so this parameter here reflects the number of stars and we send a get request to perform a state changing operation which saves a vote which is not really the way to do it normally it's done through a post request so this is generally vulnerable to cross-site request forgery. But let's go ahead and see. Now we have votes. We have this endpoint which fetches the list of votes. Um, this is the one which we see here. So for example, votes with one star have 400 the number of votes for one star same thing for the others and we have an average the average is reflected I guess here if we click once again we get always a average of three anyway so maybe this endpoint is just a static one so this request which sends a vote seems to be requiring a authentication mechanism and the objective is to be able to vote. It says here that we need to log in or register, but we don't have any logging or sign up feature. 
So let's send this to the repeater and play with it a bit. So first of all, let's start with the cookies and see where our session is being handled. So if we remove them one by one, we need to find the one which returns a different response to give us an idea what is the cookie that handles the session. I bet on the J session ID, which obviously returns a 401, meaning that we are unauthenticated, but this is related to WebGoat's authentication, not this challenge per se. Continue code. This code seems interesting, but I'm not sure if it's base 64. I don't think so. Yeah. And we have a WebWolf session, which is related to our WebWolf instance. So it seems that we need some kind of um, token to log in. So let's start with just a basic authentication. So this is the normal header that's sent through uh, base auth authentication with the minor difference that we need to encode this as base64. And let's send this one. We get no difference here and that suggests that basic auth is not used. Let's change this to post. All right, it says that post request is not allowed. Now, if we send options, we see that we have only get, head, and options. So let's go back to get and let's see if we can send arbitrary votes. No. Can we access a hidden login feature? So maybe if we go to lesson eight, maybe we can do something like login here and refresh. Or maybe we can use the REST API directly. So here it says that the login endpoint doesn't exist. What about register? Or maybe sign in. Or sign up. No. Okay. So since we have access to the source code, let's do like the video before and inspect what's going on behind the scenes. So we're going to WebGoat and on GitHub and choose the tag that corresponds to the version that we have deployed on our lab. And normally all the challenges are under the lessons directory. We want the main. So challenge 8 is the one we are after. And let's see what's here. So you can see here that there is a hash map that gives back the statistics for the reviews and we have a get mapping which corresponds to this endpoint which is the one we've been tampering with this one. So it takes the value stars and then it checks if the method is equals to get and returns, sorry, but you need to first log in. So otherwise, if we don't have a get, we're going to take the votes variable or the votes object and we're going to put the number of stars and we increment the votes by one. So it seems that the only thing that we have to do is tamper with the method. So let's go back here and instead of like we did before uh, inject a post, let's put uh, an arbitrary header. Okay, so now we have a, an exception which is being triggered and that's maybe because we have something that's not defined so let's see where this votes comes from so the votes object is the one corresponding to the statistics and we get the number of stars which 
is in this case the stars that we sent so in this case 40 and then we put the number of stars we put 40 so in this case because the hash map didn't contain any ID with the number 40 it crashed so let's change this to 4 which exists as index in this hash map and send that so we still have an error okay let's move on we increment the number of stars that we have here by one and then we return the flag so the only thing that seems reasonable to do is to send another request method so let's change this get to head all right so now we get a 200 okay with the x flags thanks for voting and the flag here um, this is a classic bypass that we encounter during a endpoint which is protected by a basic authentication so basically instead of sending a get method we change that to an arbitrary one including the head and since the code here validates based on the request method this is part of the user input which an attacker can tamper with so in this case when we put head we could bypass the authentication so now if we go to the number of votes I guess we should not have anything changed so here we have four incremented by one which means that we successfully voted let's do this once more and refresh this again and as you can see we have incremented our votes so let's validate that this flag is correct and we indeed have solved the challenge so as you can see we were close to solving this challenge using a black box approach by sending a different verbs in the HTTP request but we didn't try the head method but after inspecting the source code we were pretty sure that this is the way to go this is another use case where source code can be valuable at finding interesting bugs and bypassing the security that developers had put in place if you found this content helpful make sure to like comment and subscribe to this channel so that you get updates whenever I publish a new video on ethical hacking and bug bounty hunting. If you're new to hacking and want to learn the basics, check out the free OWASP top 10 theory and hands-on training on thehackerish.com and apply your knowledge on the lab which supports it. If you enjoy learning with videos, I invite you to watch the OWASP top 10 YouTube playlist. However, I encourage you to first try to solve the lab exercises so that you don't spoil them. Don't forget that there are supporting blog posts for most of the videos you watch on this YouTube channel. I also encourage you to subscribe to the Friday newsletter on thehackerish.com to gain some new hacking knowledge at the end of the week. If you enjoy listening while doing other things at the same time, check out the Hack for Fun and Profit podcast, link in the description box. Until next time, stay curious, keep learning, and go find some bugs.